In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly how what goes through my mind in a live weekend league gameplay of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping you become the best Madden player that you can become. And every single day, we post videos that can help you get better on the offensive side of the ball as well as the defensive side of the ball. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel. Now in this video, I'm walking you through step-by-step step, kind of what goes through my mind in a live weekend league gameplay of Madden 21. If you want to get the exact offense and the exact defense that I'm using, I'm running the trips tight end on offense and I'm running the 3-3-5 wide on defense. I have actually uh, actually have a guide out for both, uh, both of those schemes. Um, if you want to get that, that's going to be linked down in the description. So... Let's see here. We've got this corner route on the right. Nice little dot there from the doubles and sale. I actually got kind of caught uh, a little bit running it to the wrong side, but he's running a lot of, I've been noticing a lot of people in League and League just basically running different versions of the same defense. Essentially, cover three uh, is, is like taken over League and League at this point of the season. So uh, anyways, we've got some nice little simple, easy lasers uh, against the cover three. I'm going to try to hit this little quick out to Randy Moss. It's one of my favorite little beaters uh, for cover three, especially if they're backed off. But if I notice that my opponent's running a lot of cover three, uh, I will tend to like to go to something like that. Another thing I like to do is just keep things rather simple. So you're going to see right here, very simple little um, hitches and curls, just easy check downs, easy little quick reads, just to kind of get the offense going and just kind of start to force him to have to overplay something. These little, uh, little baby ins, baby outs, little quick reads are super, super powerful uh, in this offense. In fact, right here, I'm actually going to go to a little bit of a nice little underneath concept very um, the beauty of trips tight end is found in its ability to space the field rather well and so um, you're kind of doing yourself honestly and I've, I've learned this trust me when I tell you that I have learned this the absolute hardest way possible this season but you are doing yourself a major disservice if you don't check down if you don't take your quick reads because this game is so much so so much about uh, the check down in this game. It's all about the flats, the little quick, easy lasers. Those are the things that are really going to get you somewhere, at least in my personal opinion. The bombs are certainly to be had in this game, but because of just kind of how the game plays this year, uh, I just haven't found a lot of a use for for that. So uh, anyways, right here, I'm going to go to a little setup out of the play curl flat, really looking to try to hit this uh, post and that's a nice little dot over the top Favre, and that's exactly why i have brett Favre on my team right there um i find that brett Favre just gives me the best chance to win because he can make throws like that like rg3 would have been probably sacked if he wouldn't have been sacked it would have definitely been at least a sack fumble or a throw to sack interception brett Favre is able to make those throws that just every not every quarterback can make it's very unique to him because of his release i've actually got some really good abilities on him. I've got the quick draw. I believe I've got the quick draw ability on him. I know I've got the inside dead eye, the pass lead elite, and the gunslinger. So he can really, you know, get the ball into some tight windows, which is kind of how I play offense. I kind of need that uh, for my scheme, uh, just just personally, because you, you the way Madden is at this point in the season, the windows are so tight because the defensive players have like 99 man, 99 zone. Pretty much everybody has that at this point in the season. Uh, and so you just have to really, you know, it, work the ball up and down the field. It's, it's not, you know, it's not an effective strategy to just kind of come out and try to bomb every play. At least in my opinion, I've tried that and I just haven't had a ton of success just running uh, a series of money plays. We talked a lot about that on this channel, about the importance of just having, you know, kind of a power play, a counter play, things that you can kind of work the ball up and down the field. That is what I find to be really, really effective. So. Uh, anyways, right here, uh, looks like he's going to go to five wide. I actually don't know. I didn't know I set up in on this, so I might get, yeah, easy dot for him. Just easy check down. Good read by him. Running a little five wide curl flat setup. And looks like he's running Brett Favre on offense as well, so he's probably thinking the same thing I am. Now, like I said, the three through five wide, um, I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. It's just simply put the best defense in the game. Um, it's the best defense in the game. It's been the best defense in the game all season long. And if you want to learn how to run it, uh, you can get that that in my um, in my nickel three through five wide guide. The defensive guide's in the description. There's a link to it down below. You can get it for just 15 bucks. 
it's just the best defense. Uh, I, I find myself very much so at this point in the season relying on my defense because my defense is just so um, it, it's so good in terms of just how it's able to contain a lot of what people like to do. Real quick, my zone drops are 30, 10, and 10. Um, that's that's how I've been running at least until uh, you know they may force me to get out of it. But this is just to kind of further that point about you know forcing people to just forcing people to have to work a little bit. So it looks like he's going to do some quick base out of the gun tray. Um, nice little read there, little quick slant concept. I actually really like that read. I need. I thought my vert hook would or my my three rec would drop there. It looks like it's not going to. So I'm gonna have to shift and maybe put that guy in a vert hook. That's really the the pocket that, that we really want that defensive lineman to go into that zone. Also, real quick, on my defensive line, I've got Jadavon Clowney and Zadari Smith. Those are both golden ticket cards. And what's cool about a golden ticket card, especially for like an outside linebacker, is they get this, um, they get the lurker ability for one AP. Um, so that's actually like really, really a big deal. So this little quick base out of gun tray is is really good. It's 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 just as good as the trip side in. It might even be a little bit better just because of kind of the angle. If you look at the running back, he's in a very specific um, angle. So we're gonna have to kind of watch to see. There's a, and that's a little quick screen. This is one other little tip that I have for you defensively. It's actually something that I've learned recently. But basically, what you want to do, and they kind of do this naturally anyway, but you always want your last adjustment to be pass committing. So I'm gonna pass commit as like the close of my of my adjustment. Ah, dang it, I knew he was coming back to that. I should have just stayed on it, but good read by my opponent right there, just taking the taking the underneath. So that's gonna bring him a first and 10. And we're actually gonna do, now we're just gonna stay with what we've been doing, honestly. Just kind of keep forcing him to have to work. There he goes to Trey. I think he went to the inside zone right there. I'm surprised he had so much success on that, actually. I felt like we played pretty good defense. Right here, we're going to kind of shift. And he should hit the... And that's kind of frustrating. I felt like I had good defense for, for those routes right there, but I guess I didn't. And he's going to end up going in for a touchdown. So good drive by my opponent starting out. I feel like there was some moments where the defense played decently. You know, we forced him to have to work a little bit, but honestly, that was a little bit too easy for him, uh, too easy of a drive. So I got to kind of watch. He's running some basic stuff, kind of similar to Trips tight end, um, but he's running uh, from a different formation. It's just the tray, which is it's Trips tight end basically, but it's alignment's a little bit different. The alignment of the running back's a little bit different. So it might even be a little bit better for specifically the run game. Um, probably not as good for the pass game though, if I'm if I was guessing. So anyway, so back on offense, and we need to kind of keep scoring. We're in a little bit of a, a disadvantage in this game because my opponent won the toss. Uh, to me, that's a massive disadvantage. Uh, it really doesn't do, uh, it just doesn't do the offense good. That that's the case. So anyway, right here, gonna go to one of my favorite little route combos. Very simple little yard gainer. We're just going to check, take these little check down hitches, uh, just kind of keep working a little bit. We really need to go down and score. Now, if we go down and get a field goal, it's not the end of the world, but we really just have to get at least up by one possession, one and a half time. We don't want to give him the ball back with any clock left on it. So right here, I am going to go ahead and just run some, I'm trying to think. I think I'll just take the two minute warning. Yeah, I'll just take the two minute warning. And I'll tell you what, like with trips tight in, I was having a lot of, I was, I've honestly had a little bit of a struggle running the offense just because of the sheds in butt right now. Like the shed D's, like people that just simply block shed every play has been a little bit insane. But over the last couple of, um, couple of days, I feel like I found my rhythm a little bit and it really came from when I was willing to start doing stuff like that right there. Just take the check down, easy read, quick eight yards, force him to have to adjust to stuff like that and as he adjusts to stuff like that as he puts hard flats out there as he put whatever it might be it's going to start to open up other other things like this pa counter go setup uh which i really you know this very simple little dig route right here that we can put with a uh with a ghost route combo so very very simple and right there brett Favre just mm. I had it too, I had it wide open. I just couldn't quite see it. 
I really don't like having to flip my trip side in. I wish I wish you didn't have to do that. Um, I struggle running with that flipped. I'm really decent with it to the opposite side, but I just I don't always do very well with it flipped. On this play right here, um, he's showing some pretty it's pretty well showing some man coverage right here. So I'm gonna go to one of my favorite little man beaters. Um, we'll see how this works. But it's basically this motion over crosser. And if he's pressing, um, let's see, I think he did shift the zone at the last second. But you see how it does a really good job. You still have that nice little high-low um, on both sides of the field. It's really a disciplined play. One of my favorites to attack man-to-man -man coverage. Now, right here, this is kind of a critical down distance. We're going to try to just get him with the base run. And he honestly got, a, I think he got a little lucky on that tackle. We're going to quick snap base here. And there we go. That's that's more what we're looking for. And we're actually going to take time out right there. Just kind of get everybody some rest after everything and uh, kind of reset a little bit. But first and 10, ball on the 43. Again, we talked about this a little bit. The biggest thing that we want to have happen is we want to force him to, and you see here, he's kind of, he's not really respecting the base call, so we can hit that. Uh, we can pretty well hit that fairly consistently. So we want to force him to at least have to respect it. Um, we're actually going to go back to that doubles in sale concept. I really like this play. And we're just kind of looking to work. Let's see where he's using. And we're just going to take that quick read again, get down, get a timeout. And now that's going to put us, you know, coming into kind of a, a clock management situation. We're going to go to the play. I don't really want to go to verticals, actually. We're going to go to curl flat, go back to curl flat. And we're gonna run a. It's kind of a. It's kind of a similar setup to what we ran before, but it's a little bit different. And you'll see it's more of a traditional um, setup here. So we'll see what kind of defense he's rocking. A little easy read right over the middle. We're gonna take one more timeout right there, and then we're just gonna use uh, spike. You know, spikes for the rest of the rest of the drive here. And he's running a lot of cover four palms. One of the things I know about cover four palms, just a traditional thing that I do know about it, uh, is this right here. If I run this combo on the on the on the right side, I have a pretty good opportunity to be able to you know just have a really good you know a really good dot. So I've got that combo on that side. The only thing is on this left side, I don't really know what I want to run, but I think we're just going to run an option route with the flat concept, and we're really looking for the circle receiver on this play. And Brett Favre, nice little aggressive catch opportunity. And it was kind of there, um, was kind of there. He did switch to cover nine. So it, I'm, I'm going to kind of hold out. I'm actually going to go to the same setup and just see if he's uh, just see if he's leaving this open. He might or might not, but it's just one of those things where if he's in cover four palms like I think he is or cover four uh, quarters, I'm going to have a decent opportunity to be able to hit this. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to go with the little motions, uh, motion slant. So I've got a slant concept and a, um, a little uh, little route to the back out of the backfield. I'm going to put him on a ghost, though, actually. But really, first for, first read is the circle receiver. Not there. So we're just going to playmaker. And Reggie. Reggie did exactly what he needed to do. So it gets down to the one. We're going to spike here. And it's kind of decision time. And what I like to do is I like to at least look at it. Um, I like to at least look at it. I can always take my delay a game uh, if I don't like the look, but I find that I have to at least look at it. I mean, you're on the one yard line. So we're gonna go down to eye tight, come out in the stretch play. And we're gonna, we always come out and flip. And I just wanna kinda of see what he's doing. I got, you know, just, just kinda of peek. If he's not in a disciplined defense, so you see here, this looks like big nickel over G to me, but you see he's not, he doesn't have anybody in the middle. So we're just gonna try to get this stretch out, out here and Bo Jackson in for six. And that was just one of those things where we're taking a peek. We're taking a peek, we see he has nobody in the middle field to be able to shoot stretch, so we just run stretch, rather simple. Um, I think he had to either be a nickel normal or big nickel over G. I think that would be, I think that was big nickel, but you see there, we're able to get seven instead of three. That's a huge, that's a huge, huge, huge win on the second quarter and in our second drive, able to continue to just work the ball down the field. And now we're going to get the opportunity to be able to go back on the defensive side of the ball. We've played pretty decent 
uh, decently on offense up to this point. Had about as good of a close to that second quarter as you can get. And now we've got at least a one possession advantage heading into halftime and giving him this next possession. So pretty decent uh, start to this game. Defensively, we've got to adjust a little bit to a couple things. I think some really minor adjustments, just mainly with where our user is kind of working, is going to be a key a key factor. So anyway, uh, right off the rip here by opponents running some some gun spread. So I've got to watch some underneath concepts. And here he's going to try to bomb us. This should be a pick. Shaq Griffin, I've got uh, mid-zone KO and flat-zone KO all over the field, and that's a huge turnover to start the second half. So that's about as good as you can possibly get. And that's where I talk about just being patient. One of the things I think that I'm having to learn as a Madden player is the importance in being patient, right? Your routes will work. Your scheme will work, especially if you have the trips or the um, – if, especially if you're running the trips tight end or you're running the 3-3-5 three, three, wide that I've talked about before. Like, this scheme is a work in – like, it, it, it does work, right? Um, if you read it right. If you don't read it right, then of course it's not going to work. Right here, got really lucky, honestly. I should have thrown that. That was a little risky. But just trying to kind of force him to really press down. You know, you want to get him in these, like, situations where they start to really over-pursue. So, like, right here, this is another setup I really like out of the PA counter go. Um, and because he's not really doing that, we're actually going to run... We're gonna send five out on this. And you'll notice here, see how that see how that little curl is wide open? Because of where he's kind of using a different player on every play. That's one of the I don't really like that um, as an offensive player. I just don't really like the, the randomness of this. But you know, that's just something you have to kind of be mindful of. Right here, I'm gonna to go to one of my favorite little setups out of this. And this is super, super, super simple, but I'm really looking to work this left side. And just kind of watch his user. See how his user kind of let that let that drag up. So it's a little so, little simple, little underneath check down. And you see, we're just working the ball. We're working the ball down the field every single time. That's the beauty of this offense. That's how you know you're really working is if you're able to do that. So you're gonna see right here. We're gonna um, kind of go back to a little bit of that hitch setup. I'm literally looking on his left side, and I didn't see him turn his hips. That's because he didn't. And it's a good thing I didn't throw that because he was in cover too hard flat. And as you see right there, I'm able to check down and just hit that tight end across and across. Now, now that I kind of see that setup right there, you've got to think he's going to go to cover three. We're going to actually check down into the quick base. At this point, we're good. Um, like, if we just get three on this drive, like, that's considered a win. And here we're going to pop a quick base right at the middle. And you've noticed he's had a little bit of a hard time stop, stopping this run. Pretty much everybody does. Another thing that I like to do in situations, this is what I call a constraint three play. It's like where they start to have to kind of sell out a little bit to stop stuff. You see his users kind of pinching down like that. This is really good. So his user more than likely is going to shoot the middle. And when his, see how he shoots the middle there? And that's going to leave this little bubble screen wide open to Brandon Ayuk. And that's a huge touchdown for us. That's going to be able to put us up by two possessions heading into the fourth quarter. Looks like he's not even going to head into the fourth quarter with us. But as you can see right there, able to kind of execute down the stretch. When you focus on doing the little things right, it really does open up a lot of things for you. So if you want to get the exact offense and the exact defense that I ran in this video, you can get both of those down in the description.